So I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy. This video is coming to you two and a half weeks into my own personal lockdown quarantine situation amid this coronavirus time. And so I apologize in advance. It is no way as polished and rehearsed as my last video was. Uh, I'm making this because I recently shared on my Instagram stories that I've started using a new outlining template for some of the newer projects that I'm working on. And I had a bunch of requests to make an updated video about it. So here we go. Um, I also want to thank everyone who has viewed and shared the last video. Like it's so cool that sometimes I'll be scrolling Twitter and I'll see some writer who I do not even know mention that they use the foodie method to outline in their books. Like very, very cool, very surreal. Uh, I very much appreciate being like the uh, resident writerly Excel nerd. Um, but if you haven't watched that last video, basically all these two methods are are plotting templates. They're just a way to organize your outline to be the most visual and just kind of to do the most heavy lifting. Um, I have always been dissatisfied with outlining my books on Microsoft Word or some sort of word processing software, just because I feel like it involves a lot of scrolling. I feel like it's not very visual. And even though books are obviously these huge sprawling projects, if I can try to see the most of it at once as I can, like that's what keeps me happy. Um, so if you're familiar with my last method, you might see at first glance, this looks pretty different, but in actuality, it actually is really, really similar down to the bones. Um, I still use my save the cat method. It's my favorite, um, which is a three act method. Uh, it's still a chapter by chapter outline. Um, it still is good for multi POV stories. I actually think this one is even better. In fact, um, the reason that I switched to this outline is because one, um, I think it's better for multi POV stories, especially stories that like this example book that I've put into the video that switch narration mid chapter. I think this is definitely the way to go. Um, and then also it's way, way, way more detailed. The other outline is very, very minimalist, which I think is great if you're somebody who is kind of in between a plotter and a pantser. But if you're somebody who's a full thrown plotter, which I find myself becoming the more books I write, um, yeah, this method is definitely for you. So in this video, I'm going to walk through how I use this method and like why I like it, um, basically just how it works. Um, and then I'm also going to spend the later part of the video talking about all the formatting so that you can make your own Excel sheets look the way that mine looks, just because I know that not all writers are quite as familiar with the workings of spreadsheets as I am. So yeah, so here we go. Um, we're going to start off with this top column here, which basically gives a rundown of how all of this is working. As I said earlier, I use a plotting method called Save the Cat. Uh, that's a three-act plotting structure. It's based off of a book written by Blake Snyder called Save the Cat. It's primarily geared for screenwriters, but I also personally love it for novels. What it does is it splits your book into three acts, and it splits those acts into specific beats. And that's basically how I've gone ahead and organized this outline as well. Um, this outline is also a chapter outline. If you are someone who doesn't like making your outlines chapter by chapter outlines and you'd rather have them be more general beat outlines, you can just delete this chap this whole column and just kind of fill it in from there. You might want to, I guess, delete this column too. But um, yeah, this method could still totally work for you. Uh, this one here I have created only because this little example story that I'm giving for the sake of the video is a multi point of view story, meaning that there are multiple characters who are narrating it throughout. And as you can see, uh, within a single chapter, it actually switches between the characters. Um, so I have it organized as such to kind of illustrate that. If you are writing a book that only has one narrator, you can also just go ahead and delete this entire column, you don't necessarily need it. Um, next up, we have the most important column, which is plot, this is like the actual meat of your outline. Um, this is where I would write the description of every particular scene or chapter or whatever, or beat, whatever I decide is the setup for this template. Um, yeah, uh, then we've got over here, this is again, a lot of this is totally optional, a lot of this is based on how I like to plot my books, but I have created a column for each of the narrators because I like to also plot out my character arcs ahead of time. 
just to make sure that all of the big character beats and their development is matching the plot beats and kind of syncing up and happening at the same time, which can just make sure that the pacing of your story feels good and appropriate. Um, and then I have kind of the more the miscellaneous column for any other details that you want to add in that maybe you don't want to put in your plot section for whatever reason. So yeah, so that's basically the way it works. Um, I started using it for the sequel to my middle grade book because I realized that the plot of that book had a lot of similarities to a mystery novel and that there were clues and red herrings and all sorts of twists and I wanted to know where they were ahead of time and where they fell throughout the story to make sure that they weren't all jumbled together or spread way too far apart. And so that's why I created this. That book only has one narrator, so this column doesn't exist in that outline. And then I liked it so much that I decided to use it for the adult project that I'm working on that very much like this particular example, uh, example book I've created for the template has multiple characters who switch POV mid-scene. And so I do have this column and I think it's very, very helpful for that purpose. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty similar to my last one, except it's horizontal instead of vertical. Um, now we're going to be talking about the actual formatting stuff so that if you were to use this, you can go ahead and make it look like mine and just how I would continue to fill in extra chapters. Because as you can see, this is this is outlined not, not very far into the book. Um, so let's first talk about how I would add in a new chapter, like how I am actually going through the act of outlining. Um, so let's say we have a chapter four, James, but let's say chapter four actually has multiple scenes in it. It's not just, it's not just James's chapter. So we're gonna go over to the row. I'm gonna highlight it and then right click. And we'll just insert another, maybe that's a Kathleen scene. And you can just keep doing that. So it's a little bit of a process, you know, going through and adding each individual row, but ultimately it creates something that I think is quite easy on the eyes, very aesthetically pleasing, if I do say so myself. Um, so now let's talk about kind of just the general formatting stuff. If you're pretty Excel savvy, you can, you can skip all of this. This is just for people who might not necessarily know how to work Google Sheets. Um, so here are like the, the few main things you should do to make your outline look nice. Um, first, you're going to want to go ahead and select everything. So select all. First thing you should do, I like to have all of my text centered. Um, I just think it looks so much nicer if the text is centered. Um, next thing you're going to want to do, click formatting. Go down to mer... no, go down to text wrapping um, and click wrap. Basically what this does is that if you have a cell with a lot in it, and you definitely will as you fill in actual descriptions, sorry that's super chaotic looking, um, this cell is set to the default which is uh, text overflow and uh, because we're trying to make this as visual as possible so that you can see basically your whole book in just one screen, like we don't want to make this like some massive column to accommodate all of that. So what we're going to do instead is set it to text wrapping wrap. And it does that. Yes, much, much better. Um, so yeah, go ahead and select every cell, do a select all, format, text wrapping, wrap. Uh, the last thing in the select all is this. This is, I mean, I guess this is optional. I just think it looks prettier. Um, it's this little button here, the aligns. It's basically, you see how I have these cells merged to be like mega cells? Um, it just means that whatever text you have in the cell is put in the dead center of the cell. Cause if it were to be, I think the way it defaults it is top or maybe it's, I don't know, top or bottom. Let's say it's bottom. It'll look like that. And obviously that's, that's fine. I just like mine to be centered. So yeah, go ahead and select all and click that as well. Um, so that's the basic things. Um, Next up we have, I already showed you how to insert a row, which is pretty important, but now let's talk about merging cells because that is obviously pretty heavily featured in this outline. Um, so merging cells basically just means taking, you know, one itty bitty cell and making it a big cell. Um, so yeah, this is a merged cell between A2 all the way down to A12. And the way you do that, so we've got a good example right here. I said that chapter four has three scenes, so this should all be merged together. 
It's just this little button right here, merge cells. Boom. Same for the catalyst. Boom. As you go in and add more rows to your outline, you're probably going to have to keep merging things to keep things organized and pretty. Like if I went ahead and added more to the B story, like you see how it didn't merge automatically. So you might have to keep kind of adjusting as you go. Um, but yeah, um, that helps keep the outline looking pretty. Um, and then let's see, last thing, oh, coloring. Obviously the color is, I think very obvious as soon as you look at this outline. Um, I make it colorful for a few reasons. One is because um, I think it's aesthetically pleasing. The whole reason that I outline on Excel is because it is visually so much better than Word. So I'm obviously gonna color code it to make it even more visually nice. Um, number two is because I typically am working on multiple books at the same time. And so I'm often switching between various tabs with all of my outlines in them. And it's just that much easier on me if the books immediately look different, if all the outlines immediately look different the second I open up the tab. Um, helps me just keep better track of everything. Um, and then third, as you can see, there is a bit of a rhyme and reason to the way that I've color coded it. Um, I have each beat in this column as the one that has the colors. So uh, it just, as I go through the outline, especially because once I actually create the outline and these get pretty like thick, um, it just helps me keep track of where I am. And the way that I do it, uh, if you want to do it exactly this way, obviously there's like a tons, tons of different ways you could color code this, um, is you just select everything you want to color code. If you want to, I have mine so that the resolution and the setup are the same color and it kind of darkens as it works its way in. Um, you could also create like a true gradient, like I guess this is could become gold or whatever. Um, but if you want to do it the way I did it, I just highlight all the rows and then I hit command and select this as well, or it's control if you're on the windows. And yeah, I just go down the gradient that's already provided through Google Sheets. Um, yeah, helps me keep track of everything. Um, I also, this is, I mean, a very nerdy writer thing, but I, coming up with the colors that I pick for my template is weirdly fun. Um, I like that, you know, this book is a, is a blue book. I can't tell you why, but it's a blue book. Um, yeah, so that's, that is this template. Like I've said, it's not, this obviously is not teaching you how to plot a novel. It's really just, uh, if you're someone who is intimidated by plotting, or if you're someone who is like a very skilled plotter who's plotted many books before, this is just one way to organize your outline, just maybe to make it uh, a little bit more useful. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, definitely feel free to share it. Uh, I would really, really appreciate that. And, um, if you are in any way interested in my books, you can find information about them all on my website, which is www.amandafoodie.com. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. And again, hope you're all staying safe and healthy. And uh, let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to request. Um, I would be interested in continuing to film more. I think the only one that I have as an outstanding request right now is the one that's like actually how, it, how to plot a novel, not just how to organize an outline. And um, I have created a blog post about that in the past, but I actually, I do have it on my to-do list eventually to create an actual video for it. But um, if there's anything else you'd like to see, uh, please do let me know. Thanks. Bye.